If you aspire to be a titan of industry, then you have probably considered pursuing an MBA or a Master's of Business Administration. For most of the industrialized past, a strong business education was a leading factor among the wealthiest and most successful business leaders. But recent trends and data suggest that the MBA no longer dominates the world's most successful corporations. For the last several years, the majority of leading CEOs in the world actually have engineering degrees, not business degrees. Some have both, but the majority of these top performers are true engineers. So how does a background in engineering make you among the world's elite business leaders? Why an engineering degree helps a modern CEO? The Harvard Business Review is an annual publication that analyzes and ranks the top performing CEOs in the world. In 2018, 34 of the top 100 CEOs held engineering degrees. Only 32 held MBAs. Eight of those top CEOs actually had both. There are several possible explanations for this shift among the top business leaders. First and foremost, it's important to point out that the technology boom over the last decade or so has skyrocketed tech CEOs to the top of these lists. Captains of industry used to be your oil barons, steel monopolizers, and hedge fund managers. But the world has changed, and tech companies like Apple, Tesla, Microsoft, Amazon, and Google have filled those big shoes. Having tech companies run by engineers just makes a bit more sense. These are the folks who better understand the product they're building. As an example, Elon Musk was interviewed by engineering consultant Sandy Monroe for his YouTube channel. Monroe was incredibly impressed by the CEO's personal knowledge of the product. He said, I was blown away. I've seen dozens of CEOs. I've never seen a CEO ever or a president who knew more about the product. When the person at the top of the ladder fully understands the product they're creating, the entire team is in a stronger position to create and innovate. Folks like Jeff Bezos and Sundar Pichai, leaders of Amazon and Google respectively, have strong backgrounds in engineering. This has positioned them to lead their companies thinking like engineers. Engineers are extremely pragmatic thinkers. Nidin Nohira, Dean of Harvard Business School, explains that engineering is about what works and it breeds you in an ethos of building things that work, whether it's a machine or a structure or an organization. It makes you think about costs versus performance. These are principles that can be deeply important when you think about organizations. Engineers see problems and find creative solutions. In a literal sense, this applies to structural engineering problems and computer engineering problems. But bringing this problem-solving mentality to maximize efficiency across an entire company has clearly been effective. Another reason engineers make great CEOs is that they're generally data-driven analytical types. Engineers rely on data to inform their decisions, whereas someone of a different background may be more motivated by feelings and impulses. A strict data-driven approach may seem cold at times, but it has clearly led to optimal conditions for growth within these companies. Thirdly, engineers are architectural thinkers. Now, this doesn't mean that every engineer is interested, literally, in architecture. What it means to be an architectural thinker is that you're considering how every adjustment affects everything around it. An architectural thinker in an organization is constantly considering the consequences downstream for any choice made at the top. This allows them to think ahead and consider the wider ramifications of their actions, generally informing them helping them make the smartest strategic moves for the future. The Harvard Business Review found that when a board is looking to hire a new CEO from the outside, they're often more interested in candidates with engineering backgrounds. They cite the specific reasons of being data-driven, logical problem solvers and being architectural thinkers. Clearly, the high-profile boards of major companies have figured out the secret to success today. 
Does an MBA mean you're a bad CEO? Now, all of this has been highly congratulatory on the part of engineers who have risen to CEO positions. That being said, an MBA isn't a bad way to go. It just isn't the only way to go. Elon Musk has recently posited that he thinks there are too many MBAs running companies. He went on to explain that folks with business degrees often spend too much time in meetings looking at presentations and spreadsheets but never actually engaging with the product. Another downside of the MBA is that they can be extremely expensive to go after. Top business schools like Harvard and Wharton can cost upwards of $200,000. Now, that's obviously a hefty investment in your future, and hopefully you'll land in a position that easily pays it back. But it does seem that those costly, fancy degrees are not quite as crucial as they used to be. In 2014, Microsoft had fallen off the top of the tech industry, having been dethroned by Apple. The company was floundering and largely just trying to keep up with Apple's innovated array of products. Satya Nadella, a Microsoft engineer, was appointed the new CEO, replacing Steve Ballmer. Ballmer's background was chiefly in mathematics and economics. During his tenure as CEO, the company was seen as lacking innovation and simply chasing Apple's tail. Nadella entered the position and quickly made moves to bring innovation to the forefront of Microsoft's business. He diversified and expanded the Microsoft portfolio by pivoting back to the software. For a few years, Microsoft had been heavily focused on keeping with new hardware. But Nadella changed course. Software is what brought Microsoft to the top in the first place, and he decided to expand the availability of the extremely popular Office products. By making Office products like Word and PowerPoint available on Apple devices, he was able to bring more people back to the Microsoft ecosystem. Nadella then also looked to cloud computing and expanded Azure, Microsoft's web hosting service. While Amazon's AWS is still the leader for web services, Azure quickly rose to be a worthy adversary. This data-driven analytical problem solving is what brought Microsoft back from the brink and allowed them to thrive in the last five years. Engineers take risks. Innovation is the name of the game for modern industry. As the saying goes among tech companies, innovate or die. Innovation requires a certain amount of risk. Business minds who are obsessed with safety and padding margins fail to take a risk and subsequently fail to innovate. Engineers dare to try risky situations. They combine their various tools of analytics, logic, and data and arrive at the best possible solution to problems. This is what we may call a calculated risk. Without each separate piece of an engineer's mindset and tool belt, these calculated risks would likely fail far more often than succeed. Not every risk is going to pay off, but engineers are always ready for failure. In fact, many believe in failure as the most effective way to learn. A strong analytical mind takes a failure as a valuable opportunity to assess a project, an idea, or a situation, and then carefully calculates the next best move. But if you never try, then you never fail, and then you never learn. Just look at SpaceX's rocket test. In April of 2021, a SpaceX Starship test flight exploded during launch, and all three previous tests have also resulted in explosions or crashes. But Musk is seemingly undeterred and values each crash or explosion as a valuable learning opportunity. He's so sure, in fact, that he still believes Starship will be performing regular space flights by 2023. The modern CEO may need to think like an engineer. Even without an engineering background, you can force yourself to adopt some of these thought processes and habits. Logical thinking, data-driven problem solving, and architectural viewpoints are three exceptional models for success that have driven today's titans to the top of the world. As tech becomes more and more inseparable from every facet of modern life, we'll likely see more and more engineers stepping into CEO roles, even with companies that are seemingly unrelated to tech. 
For now, there is still a healthy balance between traditional business school leadership and the innovating engineers, but we're watching that scale tip more and more each day. So, are you reconsidering your plans for your higher education pursuit? Or maybe you want to follow Musk's footsteps and be among the rare self-taught engineers. Either way, let us know in the comments below and be sure to check back for more insight and innovation in today's tech world.